have purchased the worst Jeep Wrangler in the United States. Well guys, before purchasing this Jeep Wrangler from a fellow up in Charlotte, North Carolina, I did a pretty thorough inspection. You know, it's as thorough as you can get in someone's driveway when it's 150 degrees outside. The one thing I didn't like is that he chose to come on a test drive with me. And, you know, I understand that, especially these days when people are really super shady for some reason. Uh, but, you know, my the, the, the time that I like to take with myself when trying to purchase a used vehicle, I like to test drive the vehicle myself. I don't go crazy. You know, but I like to test it thoroughly, drive it how I want to drive it, take it on the roads that I want to take it on, get it to a, a secluded parking lot somewhere and really take a thorough look underneath it without someone breathing over my shoulder. You know, no offense to the guy selling the car, it's just how things went. But, you know, in a scenario like that, you really just don't get to look at it as deeply as you normally would. And of course, there was a lot of stuff that stood out even while I was uh, looking at this Jeep you know, in his driveway. It's not like I, I missed major things, but once I got the vehicle home and I really started taking it apart, you know, pull the carpets out, look underneath it, you know, even further when it's up on stands and whatnot, more stuff started to appear. And the, the thing is rusty, the thing is rusty. Let me just say, I, I found a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that maybe I really wasn't anticipating jumping into right away, but nonetheless, here we are, and today I wanna walk through all the stuff that's wrong with this thing, and the reason I call it the worst Jeep in America. She is truly a 20 footer, I gotta say. Uh, looks good from about 20 feet away, uh, I'd say. That's about where we're at right now. It's a it's a sharp little Jeep. And uh, that's how it looked in the pictures online. And it's like, man, you know, I, I, got, I think I might have to have that thing. Uh, but uh, upon closer inspection, you can really start to see some of the rot. The body in general uh, is in good shape. And, and fortunately, uh, Jeeps are pretty durable. And it's not anything out of the ordinary to find some serious rust on an old Wrangler, especially one that's from up north. Uh, but you can see here, uh, that whole corner essentially is gone and uh, we'll have to rebuild that we are, I already started on the other side uh, stay tuned for those videos um, and you know one thing that you notice obviously right away and what I noticed you know walking up on on the Jeep is that the frame has a lot of rust and you know front and back and he did disclose that he said the vehicle is up in from milwaukee wisconsin had been there for 18 years of its life he had it in charlotte the last you know three years or so this is a, a 1999 jeep wrangler tj obviously it's not that he was hiding that information he was very upfront. so there's some surface rust on the frame so that's what i was anticipating when i looked at it uh, i didn't see anything that really was crazy there's a lot of scaling we're going to have to take a lot of that off but there is a lot of rust Unfortunately, no cracks, no serious holes, uh, but that's that's a bummer. The paint is one of those things that looks really good from 20 feet away. God, it's sharp, it's dusty right now, so it's not as vibrant blue as it normally is. But once you get up on it, you can see all of the imperfections. This cowl right here, for example, is some chipping and peeling away. There was some rust right here that just tapping on it popped a hole, so I put some vial on it. Uh, some rust right here that we're gonna have to sand through and uh, neutralize. Uh, you can see here by the hood latch, this is starting to bubble up through. Hopefully I can save that. Uh, I showed you the rust in the corner. Um, coming around back, I took the spare wheel off. Uh, and this has already been neutralized, wire brushed and, and neutralized, but this is all rusty, obviously a hole through the carrier. The inside was all scaly. Uh, you can see some of the, the residual stuff falling out of there. Um, I fixed this corner already. There was some rust here, surface rust, sanded through that, neutralized it and painted it along this bottom portion of that door. Uh, that's all rusted. That was sanded through and neutralized. I will smooth it out and, and probably paint it. I didn't even notice this because of the tire being big on the back. I don't notice it, but if you guys can see that rear bumper, left corner pushed in. They must have backed into something. Uh, it didn't change the actual, you know, the distance here, uh, but you can see that this bracket collapsed. So it did its job, uh, but I didn't notice that that rear bumper was uneven before. Uh, just the, one of those things. Like I said, I already fixed the rust in the corner there and already fixed the frame. So if you guys want to see, it looks much better on this side, but we're going to have to redo that, that uh, passenger side. 
Uh, floors are pretty rusty. Passenger side isn't rusted through. I think I can sand through most of the rust and neutralize that and paint it. Um, but you know, it comes up into areas here. I don't know if the lighting, there you go. I'm gonna have to sand through that, neutralize it and paint it. Uh, driver side floor, very, very common. It's rusted through uh, in, a, in a couple of areas. So I'm gonna, I got floor pans, so we're gonna have to do that. Uh, doors are really tough to remove. The sleeves are bad, so I got all, had to get all new sleeves there. Um, some rust on the hood. I mean, the rust seems to just never end on this thing, which is just crazy. Under the hood, not so bad, just a lot of corrosion. Again, some more rust on the rail, uh, corrosion on the intake manifold, some rust on the, the brake booster. It has these really awesome quick disconnect battery cables. Uh, can't get it any tighter than that. <laughs> uh, just have to put it on a little bit crooked so it holds. I have to get new battery cables. Just, again, more rust. I, I, I just, I, I don't know, honestly. I just don't know what to say. The brakes are in, or were in terrible condition. If you guys have been following along, you'll saw the, you saw the story about when I picked this car up, uh, the front driver's side brake caliper locking up on the interstate. That was awesome. Uh, those calipers were in super rough shape. Obviously this Jeep had really sat for a long time, uh, if, as far as I could tell. You know, before they got brought it to Charlotte, it had probably sat for years in, in Milwaukee. It's the only way I can, it's the only thing I can think of that would cause this much rust. I mean, you'd have to literally just leave this in a salty snowbank and never wash it for it to get as rusty as it was. Uh, I, I, it's just crazy. Um, but so those calipers were awful. Rotors needed to be changed. The rear drums need work. Obviously, the e-brake is needing adjustment. That is all the way up and it still barely holds. It's not that big of a deal, but it's just another thing. Oh my gosh, and check these out. We got horribly painted <laughs> tuner lug nuts on the jeep wheels uh they're already stripped out this i could see that some of the the threads uh falling out as i took the wheels off gosh the frame is ugh, it's hard to believe that the other side looked just like this too uh the exhaust it's got a terrible rattle i think the muffler's bad so you guys can hear that exhaust rattle. Now you really can hear it under load. There you can hear it. And there, now that we're inside the garage, and it amplifies that exhaust noise. Just a little bit of a rattle. Oh, and I forgot to mention the belt squeals, but I tightened it and now it's just got a little bit of a chirp, but I noticed that there's a big old chunk taken out of it, so we gotta replace the belt too. Clearly, I'm exaggerating a little bit. It's not the worst Jeep in the world, but it is super rusty. I, I gotta tell you, it's got um, new front wheel bearings, already replaced the calipers. Tires are like brand new. We're just gonna have to patch some of the rust like again which I've already started doing and uh, testing my skills there. Uh, you guys saw the major rust hole uh, on the front fender. I think I showed that at the beginning of the video. If not here it is. Rough. Uh, working on that actually today so I'm not gonna show you the progress there because that video is coming out. The plastics are intact and not broken and everything actually looks pretty decent under the hood except for you know of course some rusty bits. Uh, and some of that corrosion, but that just comes off with a, uh, a scouring pad. Um, it's really dusty under here because I had the hood open doing some body work, but you know, other than the rust, the thing is actually in decent shape, so I don't have a whole lot to complain about. It runs good. That exhaust makes a funky noise, um, but we'll cut the muffler off and that should take care of that. So I, I come on here again, like I say, being a little bit dramatic and, sar and sarcastic and exaggerating a little bit. That is, it's nowhere near the worst Jeep in America, but it is a hell of a lot of work taking care of the rust issue on this thing. And that's, that's really what's getting me because I, like I said, I don't, I don't want to, 
I didn't want to get the thing and put it in the garage and then have it sit in the garage for three weeks while I worked on rust and spent money on rust repair supplies and Bondo and spreaders and sandpaper. I wanted to put that money toward, you know, fun components, modify this thing, wheels and tires, you know, the fun stuff. Half doors, soft top. I, I didn't want to waste it on body repair, but but here we are. It's it's typical of me to start pulling things apart and taking out in the big projects right away. Because there's just something about modifying a vehicle that's not in good shape. So I like to get it up to snuff first and then start making modifications. And then we'll enjoy this thing. I think I prefer soft tops on the Jeeps. I think they look cooler, but obviously they're much more convenient. Uh, taking them off and going topless rather than having to store this hard top. So my question to you guys is, I'm not a big Wrangler guy. This is my first Wrangler. Um, so I, I'm not really super familiar on how things go uh, out there on the market. My thing is thinking about resale. Do Jeeps sell better with hard tops or with soft tops or is there a difference at all? And the reason I ask that, sweat in my eye. The reason I ask that is because I'd prefer to get a soft top and I may just sell the hard top but I would hate to do that thinking that if I sell this down the road and I have a soft top that I could have got an extra five or six hundred dollars if I had the hard top or a thousand dollars who knows you know uh, so let me know in the comments below if you have any experience with that I know I could probably get eight hundred to a thousand dollars for a hard top right now that seems to be what they're listed for on marketplace twelve hundred bucks so I'm thinking you know I take a do a little negotiating, sell it for $900 or something like that. And soft tops are relatively inexpensive, but I would hate to have, again, a huge difference if I go to sell it and somebody's like, ah, well, if it had a hard top, I'd give you X, but I'll only offer you X because you have a soft top. So let me know, let me know in the comments, resale, better with hard top, better with soft top. I rename my vehicles because I just think it's kind of dumb to be quite honest, but. You know, this thing being so rusty and being a, a Jeep TJ, I'm kind of tossing the idea around in my head. It kind of popped up. I should call it the Jeep Rusty J. The Rusty J, get it? It's Rusty TJ, Rusty J. Or maybe Worst Wrangler Ever, WWE. I'd probably get in trouble for copyright things there, though. You know, wrestling and all that. But man, you know, it's it's pretty sweet. I actually enjoy driving this thing a lot. It's awesome uh, it feels a lot different you know first and second gear than we're used to in our q50s where you know third and fourth gear feel good and it pulls but not torquey at all in the low end these jeeps are are the opposite it feels good going through first second and into third gear in this thing it feels like you're flying with the doors open even though i'm sure this thing is slow i don't, I don't even know what they make like 160 horsepower or something yeah it has a an exhaust leak also up here in this area probably right at the manifold but i didn't notice it while the doors are on so probably not gonna mess with it I hope you'd consider subscribing. This is my first Wrangler. I've had Jeep XJs in the past and some of the newer Jeeps, which I can't stand, but it's my first Wrangler. So looking forward to digging into this one. And I'm also looking forward to getting some of the feedback from you guys, because like I said, this is my first time uh, messing with this specific platform and uh, you know, any information, insight, background information, things, tips and tricks and things of that nature, I'd greatly appreciate. So stick around, more Wrangler content to come. It's gonna be a good fall with this vehicle. Looking forward to it. Thank you guys very much for watching. Let's, let's cruise in this thing right now.